<laughs> These are different stages of stellar evolution because we're going to be talking about stellar evolution today. So you can put in the chat if you're feeling like a red giant, a sun-like star, a white dwarf, a black hole. And even though these aren't exactly scientific, you can certainly explain a little bit more about them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's, um, this is a real, oh great. Someone, someone put red giant. Yes. Yes. And we had a couple of white dwarfs earlier. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun way to kind of introduce a topic. And so I wanted to give you more options for our virtual settings. Uh, we talked about annotating and um, a, um, astronomy picture of the day. So just a couple of different options for you. <laughs> Today, <laughs> we have a, a few things going on. As our usual format, we will talk about what's happening with girls at this age. Um, although they're growing and heading in different directions, they're almost adults at this stage in high school. Um, they can do all the things that adults can do. Um, they still have a girlish side as well. Um, we're going to follow up with some presentation tools and then discuss badge activities. So this session is the third session of three. Uh, the first one was about uh, daisies, brownies, and juniors. Um, then, I'm sorry, daisies and brownies. Then we did juniors and cadets. And then we are now doing seniors and ambassadors. Each do one we want to levels of girls. Do we want to find out who they are? Oh, yes, let's do that. All right, let's um, another really great and easy way to interact with girls, even if you're um, on a webinar is to launch a poll. So we just like to get a, a kind of find out who you all are. So there should be a poll that shows up and you can um, let us know who you are. You can check as many as you'd like, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Great. It gives us a better idea as presenters about what kind of information you might need and, um, and lets you all know who's here. So let's see. We'll just give it another second and then we'll share that. It can be many things to many people. <laughs> <laughs> all true. right. Let's go ahead and share it one second. So it looks like we have a lot of informal educators and amateur astronomers. It's really nice to see you all with a, a smattering of Girl Scouts volunteer and staff. So that's perfect. Um, one other I was going to share. Um, let me see. Um, it's kind of a, again, a little bit of the fun piece. Let's, let's try one more of the, oops, let's see, relaunch the poll. There we go. Um, how about this one? Who else are you? So mm -hmm. One of the things that we do when we're sharing astronomy is also sharing the other parts of ourselves. It's really important to show girls um, that we are full, well-rounded people. I'm also a mom. I'm also a potter. You're also many other things. So um, are you able to see that one? Oh, yeah, good. You can. Who else are you? What other things are you? If you don't find anything on here that fits you, go ahead and throw something in the chat or you can add lots of other uh, anything else. Oh, a musician. Excellent. Yeah, and I love yes. to read books, so I would put that in there. Yes. And uh, I like to bake, but I wouldn't call myself a baker. But yeah. I would call myself an eater of baked goods. <laughs> With you on that. <laughs> uh, so you're going to put these in, and then I think you do have to push enter or something like that. Ooh, an archer. That's exciting. And a crafter. Wonderful. I'm an yeah. archer, too. And a napper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, we're going to share the results. We have a lot of artists and siblings. Uh, that's a really good one. Um, and athletes and bakers and nappers. I am with you on the napping. So having some fun polls like this to get them thinking about how full um, and and also just to have a very low stakes um, where you might want to just have fun pieces of letting them share themselves. All right, so I'll stop sharing that. You might have to close the poll for yourself and let you get on with it, Teresa. Thanks. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I think it's fun to show all of the full pictures of ourselves and share that with uh, the people in our audience, right? Because we are 
our big our our big world pictures. My big uh, big people with lots of different relationships. So getting back to our um, content, uh, we also have the six level of badges, and I wanted to show you the badge booklets. You can kind of see a little bit of the age um, increasing, like in the graphics and the names, and that's a pretty cool um, part of the badges. You can get these badge booklets on the Girl Scout uh, USA site, and we can put that in, when we post the YouTube video, we'll add that. I'm just going to go ahead and add that link now, just so you have it right now, but um, it will also be on the YouTube site. Yeah, and you don't need to go there now? No, nope, <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to give you a whole lot of um, virtual tips that you can use to help out with um, where high school girls are at and what you can do to encourage that. For example, if you're craving a sense of belonging and you're in a virtual room, in a virtual setting rather, you can use breakout rooms. They can turn on their camera and unmute or use the chat um, or use the polls like we just did. There's lots of ways that you can have interaction and I would really encourage you to do that. Um, another thing is that girls are really confident with technology at this age. And so if they have a favorite um, thing that they would like to do, it's it's great to get their input on what they like to share, what tools they like to use. Um, and all of the rest of these tips are also pretty good, but I, I'm not going to read them all to you. You can check them out later as well. I can and talk a little about graphic this one with if you a want. lot of words. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to... Um, Teresa, if you want to go on to the next part of this, this is all of them and you'll have uh, access to these, but since we're focusing on the seniors and ambassadors, this gives you some specifics about um, some of the activities like the virtual activities that you can do, the Kahoot and the Netflix watch parties and Jeopardy. So they will have a lot of experience with these kind of things. It's great to let them lead at this point because they are old enough to know what kinds of things they'd like to do. And they've had experience and can often run some of these um, pieces of technology. So I encourage you, as Teresa was saying, to let them lead. Yeah, and if you're doing astronomy, you can definitely have the um, one girl uh, talk about what's in the sky uh, and also a different girl talk about what news is going on with the space uh, research. Uh, there's so many um, things you can do to have them prepare even a little bit uh, beforehand, so. Yeah, thanks. Okay, another great tool is asking questions, right? Um, and I would love for you to not only do this in the re virtual realm, but in it, when we get back to real person interactions, that um, learning about where the girls are at and their experiences, um, making a connection, and encouraging them to engage with what you're presenting. All of those are good uses for questions. Vivian, would you like to tell us the story about um, NEEF? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, there, there are a lot of telescope conventions that happen around the world. And, um, and I was at one many years ago where I was in line um, waiting to view the sun and I was talking to the woman uh, behind me and she was a solar physicist and we were having these great conversations. She knew so much and I was learning so much. And um, the guy in front of me, uh, said something like uh, the the gentleman who was showing off the sun in the telescope was talking to the man in front of him in front of me saying yeah that's a prominence and you can see there's a filament across the front and the bottom left and was telling this man about what was going on and then I got up there and he was like hey, okay so do you see that big ball that is do you see the the um the big circle that's the sun I was like, yeah, yeah, very cool. And um, he did the same to the woman behind me who was a solar physicist. And um, I feel like he really missed out on a chance to learn from her uh, about you know, what was going on on the sun. He kind of made an assumption that we would have maybe not even looked through a telescope before. So he was, give, he was explaining it very simply for me, for us, maybe because we were young women, maybe because um, it just didn't have the time, right? We don't know. But 
it's really, really lovely to when you're showing something through a telescope to just ask everyone, have you ever looked through a telescope before? Because many people have not. That's a completely reasonable question. Um, but if they have, they might say, well, I own a telescope or my mom's an astronomer. Um, and you can give them, they can give you a better idea of what level to begin talking about these things. Um, yeah, so I encourage you to ask them uh, by question asking, you can learn a lot about where they are and what kind of interests they have. Yeah, and if you're not using a telescope, it's still okay to ask where people are out. Like, have you heard of yeah. whatever you're presenting? Have yeah. you heard about supernovas? Uh, you know, because, um, there's so many things that people know and have experience with and, and we don't know. And it can ask very quickly and you get an answer really quickly and it helps you gauge uh, where you're at. And something that you usually bring up, Teresa, which I really appreciate is that, um, you know, gauging your audience by their interests, not by um, what they already know, because there could be very different access to resources. Maybe um, your mom's an astronomer and you look through telescopes all the time, or maybe, um, you know, your mom works nights and can't take you to the amateur astronomy club to go look through telescopes. So you don't have access to that. Um, so while there may be a lot of interest, not knowing something doesn't mean that there's not interest there. It just might be a difference of access. Right, right. Different people have different resources. Yeah. You know? um, so then there's another thing you can do with questioning, which is make a connection. Similar to what we were saying with uh, who else are you? You can um, find out about girls by asking how long have you been a Girl Scout? Have you seen the new space movie? Because there's always a new space movie out. Um, there's a lot of new Star Wars movies that are out. Um, and a lot of times people will have a favorite movie that they enjoy, um, Hidden Figures or Interstellar or The Martian. So if you have a favorite space movie, put it in the chat now. And that's just a nice way to make a connection. Um, Wally, yes. <laughs> um, one of the... Guardians of the Galaxy, The Martian. Yes, yeah, so many, so many great space movies. And so it's a it's a good way to connect with people. Um, I want to say that pause up on the top, space balls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, space balls is a wonderful movie. So funny. Um, when you ask a question, pause. Uh, it's really hard for me to do it, but I sometimes will just count to 10 in my head because what happens is people have to become aware that you're asking a question and then figure out what the question is and then figure out what their answer is and then say it or write it in the chat. Um, and it takes people even time to type. So give people time to absorb what's going on if you're wanting feedback don't just jump from one question to the next um, so that counting to 10 tip really helped me vivian told me that so thanks <laughs> okay um one last thing that you can do is really connect back to the material that you're sharing um and in girl scouts we really want to keep things girl led so having them engage with um what's going on is really great. Like, um, what do you like best in the sky? What do you know about Jupiter? Or um, what's your favorite object to look at in the sky? So those questions can help you decide what you're going to show if you have a telescope and are, um, and sometimes those objects aren't up in the north, in the night sky right then, they're in the summer and we're in the winter or vice versa. So um, you could even talk about that. Yeah, a lot of people know Greek mythology. You can make constellation connections. Also, you can make connections um, with other cultures and share the stories that you know or um, ask them to share the stories that they know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, a lot of people think when we're talking about questions that it's just about answering questions, right? Um, so we can use connection and, uh, excuse me, we can use questions to connect 
But we can also try with when we're responding to questions to build up scientific thinking. So um, a lot of the times that means um, trying and failing and um, failing is called the first attempt at learning. Sometimes that's what the abbreviation is sometimes uh, as an acronym, right? So uh, partner with the girl to answer her own question and have her think about what she knows about the object. Uh, so she might ask how many moons does Saturn have? And you can say, well, what do you know about Saturn? Oh, I know that there's lots of rings. Right, and the rings are, um, may have little tiny shepherd moons around them, you could tell there. You know, just uh, encourage them to talk about what they know. And really, if they're um, saying something, it's kind of like a gift to you and you don't wanna jump in with saying, that's wrong or that's, uh, uh, where did you hear that, you know? There's a lot of crazy things on the internet like flat earth and uh, all of those different topics we get presented with a lot, right? So think of it as like a conversational gift and you don't wanna say, oh, this is the worst sweater I've ever seen, right? <laughs> you wanna say, um, thanks, this is, that's really interesting, right? Which brings up addressing misunderstandings. You don't wanna to jump to what that's wrong, right? find out what's right about it. This is kind of tricky, but it helps you to gently guide someone to the right answer. And also um, they're not coming to us with really hard beliefs. They might be just trying to share their interest in space by talking about flat earth or astrology or, or whatever those topics are. And so we just want to come with them with a welcoming response. Um, sometimes it's in the things we're doing as well. Um, so if a lot of you might have seen girls when they come out of from the telescope, they're like blank. Mm -hmm. um, or you say, oh, what did you see? And they're like, uh, you know, you know, you could tell by their face, they haven't seen anything. Um, so then you can say, hmm, look, See, if you move your eye around a little bit, you might be able to see different things um, in the telescope, right? You don't wanna say you're looking in the wrong spot. <laughs> you wanna confirm that they had a good experience, their eyes still work, they can see things, they could maybe see the mirror in the back of the telescope, um, but they aren't seeing the, the stars yet. So it's really important to try to find something that's right even if it's just that's interesting or people used to think that the sun went around the earth for a long time people thought that but we know now that the earth goes around the sun and all the planets too would you like to see jupiter in a telescope and that's kind of the way i think about it is just like saying yes you're reasonable to think like this giving the correct information, and then turning back towards what you're doing. Um, Vivian, you're nodding. Did you have an example of something you wanted to share? Um, yeah, somebody said astrologer. I, I get called astrologer a lot, um, and I don't know anything about reading palms or um, how to divine the night sky. So I often say, you know, that's a really reasonable mistake. I'm an astronomer, um, but, you know, geology and biology are all ologies. I can see why astrology would roll off the tongue, but astronomy is the actual science of the night sky um, and kind of go with that. So and yeah. carry on to talk about whatever we were talking about. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that. I, I, I usually try to say, you know, astrologers did a great job um, in the, the olden times in ancient history. They hit really good positions of the planets that um, Kepler used to help us understand what's going on in the sky. Um, so, yeah. Just We're building on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that people will forget what you say. Um, they might not know the facts that you're talking about, but they will remember how you make them feel. and. We want them 
to be more open to trying these new things. Um, and they will when they sense that you're genuinely listening to them. One thing I also want to point out is that it's okay to say, I don't know. <laughs> So, because um, no one knows everything, right? You want to show them how you find out. Um, there's a whole outreach um, tips that you can look at on the Night Sky Network called um, Sharing the Universe. I'm going to just show you a quick clip of this video. And that's just about two minutes. So you can um, just think about different ways that you could say, I don't know. Oh, God. I can. Run away faster than the audience. Hold on. I'll be ready to. <laughs> There's no need to panic. Try sharing the general principles that you do know using terms that are easy to understand. Then engage the visitor in a conversation and discover what their interests are. Like this. How long would it take? Oh, Teresa, you have to mute, unmute yourself because we just lost you. Appears just Sorry. Just like to travel, looking at our neighboring galaxy, and she knows a lot about the big research telescope. I went back too far. Now, here's one more question that should sound familiar. We're looking at a cluster of young stars. How far away are they? I don't have a clue. I couldn't possibly know the difference. So that's what you don't want to say. How far away are they? Well. Since the cluster is here in our own Milky Way galaxy, it's less than 100,000 light years away. Here, hold out your hand. Let's shrink the solar system, the sun, and all the planets so that it would fit in the palm of your hand. The star cluster would be at least a few miles away on that scale. Wow, space is big. <laughs> it sure is. What else have you seen tonight? Awesome. You really gave the visitors something interesting to think about. So those videos are great, and um, I would encourage you to check them out if you're just getting started in outreach, um, because they have a lot of really good tips. Um, another thing I want to mention is that um, a lot of times people are worried about what if I get stuck, or um, who am I to present information or be um, the superstar that everybody is looking at? Um, and everyone is a beginner at first, and everyone has those moments of doubt. That's messages from society saying that we're not enough, but we are. Right? Um, don't listen to those messages because you belong here. You belong in astronomy. I know a lot of you are already educators and doing an amazing job, but I just want to talk to you about whatever stage you're at, these moments of doubt can creep in. So just know you're not alone, and um, that's you know, but it's part of being astronomy and it's okay. <laughs> you belong. And you can demonstrate learning while you're at it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to tell you about um, sharing the science and why that's important because um, when people think about astronomers, they often think about um, Galileo, probably the most um, well known astronomer, arguably. But um, he published his findings, and that was a lot of the reason why um, people know him. But he also published them in Italian, which was the language of the day. So most of the academic thinking was written in Latin, and only the very educated um, knew Latin. But he wrote in Italian, which was the common uh, language. And so everyone was able to read it and uh, learn from it. It was a very uh, egalitarian way to share his science. And we still think of him today. Um, and we have that same opportunity to share. Um, excuse me, just one sec. Wait. Um, a lot of times we have our jargon and our special vocabulary, but if we use the common language of the people, we're going to have a lot more connections. So let's get back to the badges. Uh, we're talking today about the 
oldest level of Girl Scouts, the seniors and ambassadors uh, in high school. Uh, the seniors have this expert badge, which is all about stars, astrophotography, citizen science, and really the life cycle of stars. I think that that's a really um, interesting topic. I, I could spend my whole life researching stellar evolution. So then, then the ambassador badge has more with telescopes, also um, exoplanets and careers, right? The, these are girls that are looking towards the future. Um, they're in 11th and 12th grade and they're thinking about their careers. They also are at a stage where they wanna share their knowledge and help their community. And they've done astronomy, a lot of them are building telescopes or using remote telescopes. So uh, take advantage of their knowledge and have them share some of their tips and things that they've been doing. You wanna go over this overview? Sure, I just wanted to let you know it's a spectrum. There's a continuum that, and we build on concepts. So some of these um, concepts that we've explored with the younger girls in middle school, the stellar evolution piece, we get into much more detail at this point because um, the girls are old enough to really think critically and um, they have enough of the probably background in some um, chemistry and things like that that they need to to think about stellar evolution in a new way. But the citizen science projects get more interesting. The astrophotography gets more interesting, um, builds on knowledge that they may or may not have had in the younger grades with the other badges. But um, they're definitely ready to take on some big projects, and they're really fun. Um, one that I really love is the next one, the astrophotography. The both the senior and ambassadors cover astrophotography, which is basically just nighttime photography. It can be anything from, you know, taking beautiful images of the stars as they move throughout the night, which is fairly technical, but you can also have a lot of fun with taking a nighttime picture and drawing with light. You could put your name uh, with a flashlight. There are lots of different ways that you can do astrophotography um, and have fun with it. This image right here is uh, from International Observe the Moon Night that's coming up this October 16th. Um, and they have a really great, so I should say that both the badges have instructions with great links on how to do astrophotography. But I also just found this one I wanted to mention. Um, they've got a lunar photography guide uh, specifically for taking great images of the moon from, you know, with your, uh, with your smartphone or with a camera or uh, through a telescope. So there are lots of different ways uh, to do astrophotography and it's an awful lot of fun um, to practice. Yeah, it doesn't actually take as much as you one might think. That was all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a lot of girls in high school have their own cell phones and it's, there's even uh, docking mechanisms to put a telescope towards the eyepiece when oh, yeah. when we're all together again. But if they have their own phone, they can go out and take a picture and then share it the next time you're together, um, either in person or virtually. And as I was mentioning stellar evolution, there's a um, lot of different pieces of stellar evolution that are that's in this badge. It's actually two of the five steps. So, um, hold on just a second. This is the senior badge that we're talking about. So, um, the younger high school girls. It's yeah, really it's fun. One and two. So, freshmen and sophomores will do this badge. And this is two, like I said, two of the five. Mm -hmm. Wait. Um, so, the first one is all about the stuff you're made of. And then the second one is all about viewing the stars. So, um, in astronomy, when we're talking about the stuff we were made of, we're talking about the stars, right? Um, if you have any ideas about the elements that our bodies are made of, you can add them in the chat. I know I breathe in oxygen. So there's gotta be some oxygen. Carbon says Cynthia, yeah, absolutely. We are carbon-based life forms, we've heard that. And often girls will have heard something like, oh, we are, 70% water <laughs> or something along those lines. Um, anybody else like, what's your, what are your, 
<laughs> what are your bones, bones. or your uh, <laughs> blood made out of? What kind of atoms are in there? Yeah, calcium. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of you guys are already educators and know these breakdowns, right? But there actually is a step there you can do um, an infographic about it. And so I'm just going to show you this really quick, this video. Um, my name is Erin and I it's done by a Girl Scout. And so they have, she has lots of great information about how to do an infographic and having the girls see themselves in presentations or through working with other kid, girls, it's really good for them. Okay, so here we go. Let's do numbers like it. into a compelling visual image. It makes your data more interesting, appealing, and a lot easier to understand. The four chemical elements that make up most of the atoms in your body are hydrogen at 62%, oxygen at 24%, carbon 12%, nitrogen 1.1%, and then you also have traces of calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, sodium and chlorine that collectively make up 0.6%. And then there's a variety of trace elements adding up to about 0.3%. So how do you use this data to create an infographic of yourself? Before you begin, go and take a look at infographic examples to inspire you. Next, think about your audience. So who will you show your self-portrait to? How will that impact the design of your infographic? How will you show your data? Will your audience respond better to exact numbers or estimations? So begin by drawing an outline of yourself or a different shape that represents you. Once you've decided on your audience, calculate or estimate how much space each element will take up and then divide your shape accordingly. Then label and fill in each section using a different color or pattern. So here's what I did, very, very basic. Okay. She's great. Yeah, there's actually a whole series of those. We'll put those in the notes from with this video as well. Yeah, I just think it's great when they can relate to a peer who's sharing their astronomy knowledge as well as um, the person in front of them who might not be their peer. But uh, um, there's lots of those videos. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Can I take this one? This is one of my favorites. Sure. I love. Um, uh, so this is senior step two, and uh, it's a really great way for the girls to act like scientists, these young women. Um, they are going to look at a lot of different objects and start to notice patterns and sort them. This is a sorting game um, that it comes in the badge booklets, um, and you can sort based on what they are, what they look like, what they're made of. Um, in, when we're in person, we can just cut these up and uh, and there's a lot of background information also, I should say, in the badge booklet. So you won't have to guess on these um, necessarily as a presenter. Um, there will be places to look up the information about the life cycle of stars and where it starts and where it ends. Um, there's also, if you, has anyone ever seen astronomy picture of the day? We highlighted it last week, I believe. Um, it uh, shortened to APOD. Um, and it's one of my favorite websites. Every day there is a new amazing astronomy picture. You, I sometimes keep it as my background on my computer. Um, but they have lots of great pictures of all of these uh, uh, life, uh, all the stages in the life cycle of a star. So when you're in person, you can cut them up. If you go to the next slide, we've made a jam board. Um, I should say our colleague Jessica Henricks has made a Jamboard that um, allows you to do the sorting virtually. If you haven't used Jamboard, um, we'll put that link in there as well. It's a very fun resource. You just make a copy of this and then you can um, you can take it and run with it and have the girls sort it if we're doing if you're doing things online. It's a really fun one. Um, oh, are you doing? Oh, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, Thanks I just was showing that. the Jamboard picture. Right. And also another thing you can do in this step is sort of showing a baby book 
life of the stars where they have um, starting with the nebula or protostar and going all the way up to a supernova or um, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, there are a few the different ways that you can share star. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you're an amateur astronomer and you like to look through a telescope, or even if you don't consider yourself an amateur astronomer and you like to look through the telescope, um, the NASA Night Sky Network has a very cool uh, celestial treasure hunt that goes through finding each of these types of things in the um, night sky. There's the handout, which is this that I'm showing now, but there's also a whole backup packet. If you don't know the sky super well, that will show you where things are. Um, yeah. So I apologize that uh, link is broken today, but it will be back up tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we're just having a little trouble um, with the website today, um, but we'll put it on the also on this recording. Uh, one other one that you can do, this is uh, also senior step one. Um, Oh, sorry, the last one was senior step two, but this is senior step one and and relates back to that we are made of stardust piece that they have maybe already explored a little bit um, with the infographic. This is, um, yes, we are made of star stuff, but so is everything that we see almost. Um, so there's a Girl Scout version here in the, um, uh, in the, Badge packets, booklet. badge booklets. Thanks. Um, it's a great activity because uh, it's a good one to do with a group of girls and uh, each person gets to be a, an element or two. And then you hold up a thing such as, uh, okay, would we have sharks? And the girls look on their, um, on their cards and like, okay, a shark takes iron, it takes calcium. All of these things are made in very large stars that go supernova. Um, so after they've talked about this life cycle of stars, it takes these really big explosions to make the heavier elements that make up almost everything that is out there. And, um, you go all the way through and you get down to what is left. If there were no supernova, if these life cycle of stars didn't happen and it's not much, I'll tell you. Um, yeah. So that's a fun one to do with a group of girls, especially in person, I think. Okay. Cool. Um, I want to uh, talk about the world beyond Earth because exoplanets and aliens are such a fun topic and so many people are really interested in them. So we could talk about the science of exoplanets with this um, natural interest that people have in um, little green people. <laughs> so um, one of the steps is about uh, um, exoplanets and worlds beyond Earth. And this is in the ambassador badge, which is the older girls badge, um, juniors and senior level or 11th and 12th grade. And you can um, use your art skills to make a brochure or like a tourist brochure of like, come see um, this planet that's around a uh, a rogue planet that has no star and it's dark all the time on this planet or all of those interesting worlds that are out there. Supposedly there's one made of diamonds. I mean, such so many interesting things and they could make a brochure for that or why you would wanna go there. Or they can also um, design a habitat where they could use uh, materials that they have or just draw it or even AutoCAD and those computer aided things. And there's lots of, um, different apps that explore worlds. One of them is Infiniscope, which I'm not going to show you now, but um, they have this uh, interactive called Small Worlds, and it is really fun. Um, and the Girl Scout version has uh, female role models that are doing research in this area, so Deborah Fisher and folks like that. So it's really fun. And speaking of research, I want to talk about some NASA science, which is also a step. So I am wondering, which is your favorite NASA emblem? Some people like the worm, which is the original NASA emblem from the 70s, 60s, 50s, um, right? And some people like the meatball, which is the updated version that they've had for the last oh, 30, 40 years as well. So it's a really um, personal preference, but this is, a, again, a low stake 
uh, thing. It's and you can be a lot of people on on team meatball. Some people are on team worm. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. just want to say thanks so much. I have to run, but uh, Teresa's going to take you from here. Thanks all. Thanks, Viv. Thanks for joining us. So um, this is a great way to just include um, people's preferences. Uh, about NASA science, there are so many different fields. Um, if you go to nasa.gov slash STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, I'm sure a lot of you know that, um, you can find different activities there. Um, another piece you can do is the science and research that is in um, the NASA um, science mission directorates. There um, is, they, have these four on the graphic there, but heliophysics, just looking at the sun, earth science, looking down at the earth, planetary science, which is comparing different planets and astrophysics, which is looking at the stars. All of these different uh, pieces of what NASA does can be something that the girls can really explore. And also regardless of which one they pick, NASA, women at NASA is a really great site because it's very inspiring and there's a whole step on careers at NASA that um, they're really interested in that and when they're in their junior and senior year of high school, like thinking about what they're going to do, where they're going to college, all of those pieces is really important to them at that stage. So um, having some inspiring role models is great. Um, Here's two missions that um, are sort of recent. Um, OSIRIS-REx is gonna uh, return in 2024. So that's a mission you could talk about for a long time or um, the Mars 2020 um, pers Perseverance. A lot of girls saw that launch or know about it since it happened recently. So there's lots of missions you can explore and that's a badge step as well. Uh, also, if you can, try to connect it to things that are going on in their world. So this summer, there was a ridiculous heat wave going on. And one of the things that NASA does is look down, use their satellites to look down at Earth as well as looking up into the sky. So um, this is a super quick seven second video about um, how hot it was and how hot it was where, right? So you can see like there's uh, in Portland and all of those uh, areas of Seattle where it was so unusually warm, there was that heat wave going on. That's something that they um, can relate to because it just happened. Some of them might relate to it because that's where they're from. Um, they definitely heard about it in the news, but also the bigger picture of climate change is something that today's youth is really concerned about um, as we all should be. And so there's lots of really good um, climate short movies you can watch at climate.nasa.gov. And that kind of brings us back into the research, right? Um, there's so much citizen science we can do. Um, cadets also have this citizen science piece in their badge. Um, and we talked about that last week if you are interested, but these are all, um, resources for helping to conserve the night sky. But there's a whole lot more you can do with citizen science. Um, there's lots of different projects uh, where you can look at eclipses or meteor showers or um, so many different pieces. And I would encourage you to go to either the citizen science link with NASA or SciStarter.org. Um, they are two sites that have great citizen science projects that girls can do. And then another part of this step is to about the competitions. I'm not sure how many of you know, but there are NASA has contests and challenges from drawing to writing to original research. There's so many of them on the site. And so if you go to this spacestem.nasa.gov, you can find this whole listing of different contests um, and challenges, celebrations, things that the, they can do as well. Uh, one other piece I wanna mention is about this women in space science. There's some beautiful, um, 
posters that Chandra made, uh, the telescope, the team made these great pictures. Um, and those are in Recoloring the Universe. Um, there's just a lot of really great resources. I have a whole bunch of them written here in the links. So we'll have to include those links on the recording on the under the YouTube recording. We'll put the links there. And here's just a couple of refreshers from the different activities. Uh, we want to remember that it's okay to say, I don't know, and ask questions and to bring these topics down to earth to show the girls um, things that are relevant to their life. Um, this is just a whole bunch of different tips. We like for STEAM, we did the art, um, the infographics, and we talked about the tourist brochure. There's lots of ways you can uh, connect art and science together. And most importantly, keep it girl led and have fun. Uh, these are the topics that we went over at all three sessions um, for um, presentation tools and, of course, the badges. So you're welcome to watch the other two if you weren't able to attend these the sessions all together. Um, I also want to tell you about the Night Sky Network um, page, which is specifically about Girl Scouts and the Space Science Badges is bit.ly slash astro all. Again, with the Night Sky Network site being down today, you might wanna wait till tomorrow, but they have all kinds of um, activity kits and ways that you can connect with your local Girl Scout Council and how to have a star party. Um, just lots of really um, cool tips that you can find on how to match a badge to a telescope viewing object and those kind of pieces that you can use for your next event. And I really want to say um, thank you because we don't know how far these this will go. Um, you just take what you learn and you keep growing and sharing and noticing. And as we know better, we do better. You never know how far your interaction with the girls will go um, because sometimes all of us remember either a teacher or a planetarium trip or something that was meaningful that got us into astronomy. And so you can be that, that piece, right? So I wanna encourage you to, um, to keep, keep doing research and keep trying to make astronomy accessible for everyone. I'm so glad um, that you guys have been enjoying the series. I just saw that in the chat. Um, I'm putting in the chat also the form for feedback. Um, we would love it if you can fill it out. It's just two questions. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, so this, the recording for the second one has not been posted yet, but it will be this week. We just have to, um, we've had a busy week. <laughs> so um, thanks. I'm going to um, stop my share now, but I also want to um, see if there's any Q's and A's that you are interested in um, in hearing responses to, any questions you have, challenges you've had when you're having a Girl Scout event, or any um, success stories. If you want to share your success stories, it would be, be great to hear about those as well. And seeing a lot of thank yous and 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 great information, I really appreciate that. Um, so Tammy Davis says, uh, "Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to say your last name." Um, that she's trying to find an astronomer that is a person of color and having a very difficult time, and it's um, it's true. There are not a lot of uh, astronomers that are people of color. It's both. Um, it, it's very sad in our field, um, but there are a lot of people of color who are doing astronomy. They're just not as well known often. And um, in addition, they are getting kind of forced out of our uh, science because of the systemic racism and issues they have to deal with um, on a regular basis. So um, 
I'm not sure what your question is, Tammy, but I wanted to, you know, say that I understand you're having a difficult time. And if there is um, a topic that you're interested in, I can point you to a person. Uh, um, Chrissy says to find female astronomers, sometimes they do a Google image search for that interest. Yes. Um, yeah, so there's a few people um, you can reach out to. Um, I'm not sure if you know um, Fab Femmes. It's short for Fabulous Feminine Scientists, but um, they have all different STEM fields there. They have engineers and lots of people. So you, it's a database of women that you can search through for your different categories. Um, and everybody um, does Zoom presentations or um, is interested in, in connecting with uh, kids and sharing their inf info and careers. So that's a really good website um, to connect with someone. Um, I know I know lots of people in the field, so um, I'm going to share my email in the chat so you can send me more information about what field you're looking for. Um, But yeah, just send me, um, there's a, um, email and I'll be happy to share my resources that I have. Oh, and Chrissy put a good link in there, the um, 500womenscientists.org. Also, there's a whole website called um, women at nasa.gov. Good question. Thank you. Does anyone else have another question or a success story that they want to share? Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now and um, maybe that will also embolden some folks to um, share their stories. For those of you watching on YouTube, thank you so much for joining us.